the more safe you attempt to make things, the more dangerous a setting it becomes. If you don't have your health, what do you have? You are a functional medicine doctor. Join us as we blend modern and ancient wisdoms to be well now. Comfort. Do we seek it out or do we voluntarily create discomfort? Ooh, I think a lot of people really seek out comfort. They want to be, they want to be guaranteed some level of security. I want to feel safe yeah. and secure. Uh-huh. But that's also your downfall. Why? Because if you, if you go after safety, everything, the more safe you attempt to make things, the more dangerous a, uh, a setting it becomes. It restricts your learning, it restricts your advancement, it restricts your experience with the world, your engagement in society, your your ability to to learn new things. It restricts the ability of your body to learn new things. How much of life do you think is a paradox? Yeah. I think life in general is a paradox. Create more discomfort to feel more comfortable. Uh Uh-huh. The more, well, the more comfortable you can become with discomfort, the more comfortable you will be. Are you a Zen master? I am not anywhere close to a Zen master. There are a lot of other Zen masters out there that we can listen to and vibe with. But no, I'm not a Zen master. It's flu season. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to tell you what. Five herbs that can really help you fight the flu, prevent the flu, nourish your respiratory health. I want to get into that, Dr. Ron Dumar, and that's why we are here for the Be Well Now podcast. Yeah, and everyone everyone has upper respiratory or lung-related issues that they're dealing with right now, me included, as you can hear. I love the fact that we are changing up the visuals here. So if you're not listening to us on a podcast platform, you see this. If you are, check us out on YouTube. I'm Nick the Curious Patient. This is the Be Well Now podcast, and we're trying to give you tips today. Yeah. And, and one of the tips is about comfort. Yes. We got kicked out of the podcast studio. We're in Dr. Dumar's office. And I'm so comfortable and I'm wondering, is this okay to feel comfortable or should I have more discomfort? Just be be, relaxed here, huh? Just be relaxed. Well, the discomfort of it was the fact that we got kicked out of our original podcast studio. That's the discomfort. What he's saying is he's so comfortable with being uncomfortable. Or the fact that like, I really like the leaning back here. I'm feeling very into this vibe. So anyway, I want to get into tips that people can use now. And then I want to get into the herbs, but... The fact that you seeing lots of patients might feel a little run down, I think gives people permission out there to feel like, oh, if I get sick, it's not, I'm not a bad, deficient, correct, like worthless soul. Because when you get sick, everything changes. Yeah. Well, sickness, Ugh. like getting sick or feeling like you're sick, the symptoms, the symptoms of being sick. Thank you for that cue. The symptoms of being sick. That's really your body healing. Really? Those are the those are the symptoms of healing, and that's perhaps a better way of describing it, right? Is mm. you you're sick, you got sick, let's say it, or a pathogen invaded you before your body actually detected that there was a pathogen that invaded you. Correct? Don't know what you just said. So if a bug or a microbe is breathed into your nose, it crosses the barrier of your nostrils before your immune system even detects necessarily that it's done so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which means that a microbe can enter your body. The moment it enters your body, it's not like you instantaneously have this immune response. It takes a moment, even in um, IgE, like anaphylactic type emergency immune responses, it takes a building of the immune response to get to that place. So our immune system has to, first of all, identify that there's a pathogen present. Okay, so what I'm saying is you're sick or a pathogen has invaded your body before you even feel the symptoms of being sick. Right. So being sick is actually that there's a pathogen in your body. Not that you feel the symptoms of being sick. 
Okay. All right. So I know that's a really maybe a mind bender there, but I'm just trying to help you understand that what we're talking about is revving up or assisting the body and the body's mechanisms as much as possible. So if I have an immune response or if I start to feel really crummy at some point, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm sick. It isn't a, it isn't a, uh, a signal to me that my immune system's working to fight something off. But it's very likely that um, a significant time before that, the pathogen had actually invaded my body. Okay. All right. So I, I hope that's interesting. So when I For feel crummy, people, that's my body fighting it off? That's your body fighting it off. So when I've already been sick for a while or you've, some time. You, yeah, you've already been sick for some time. You've already had the invasion take place. The, the microbe has already entered the body. So the feelings of the flu, runny nose, a fever, all of those things are your body's immune mechanisms trying to expel the virus or the pathogen. Mm. So if I have a runny nose, that itself is not necessarily the sickness. That is a symptom of your body that's saying, hey, we're, uh, here's our immune response. This is how we get rid of sickness. We do it by pushing it out our nose, pushing it out our mouth, pushing it out our secretions of our tears, by pushing it out our bowels, right? So it's all these areas we use to eliminate and clear pathogens. So even if you feel like you're metabolically healthy, you can still get run down. You can still get sick. Yes. You're a human. But in today's episode, five herbs that can supplement that. And I wonder, can we just do something right now? Yeah, so like, what, what could I do is, today to ward off against getting sick? Like, what's a good decision I can make today so before we get into herbs and... That we can do yeah. right now. Something we can do right now. So people love to have uh, creams to rub over their chest or like, I think as a kid, often it was Vicks Vapor Rub, right? Mm. Um, there are a lot of organic and a lot of herbal options that you can get for that and you can have that at home. Uh, but a rub that has some mint in it, uh, it'll have maybe even a little bit of uh, beeswax okay, in it as well. Some menthol. The menthol is really going to help open up the lungs uh, and the, the nasal passages as well to help clear um, the, the pathogens and allow the, the, the bronchioles to be open so you can continue to breathe. Okay, So that's something you do that's simple. One is, thing is that a is that a recipe or is that a product? What what, what do I need? There's a product, but I don't. I, how could I make it at home? How could you make it? Well, weren't you telling me to put something on my? You you got to give me something here. Yes, I'm telling you to you put it you on can your use. chest. But what? Do, how yes. do I mix it up? What's the ratio? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some beeswax. Where do okay? I get that? And you can get beeswax at a natural health food store. Okay. And then you want to get some menthol. Or some peppermint, and I would use lavender with that, and maybe even some essential oils. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, you're going to essentially melt down that beeswax, like on the stove. On the stove. Okay. With very the oil very the low heat. Or the beeswax. And melts then you're going first. to add the oil after. Okay. Okay. So then you'll mm -hmm. add it once it becomes more uh, loose and liquid, and then once you've stirred it and added that, you're going to essentially pour it off into a container that you want to store it in. And then you'll let that cool. Once it's cooled, then you can apply it. You can put your hand in it. It'll be firm and you can apply it to your chest and it'll be your own little liniment that you can use for lung issues. When you feel... Well, well you can use it when you feel an upper respiratory, when you feel a cough, if you feel a, a sinus congestion, anything like that would be good to apply. I'd say especially at nighttime. The other thing you can do with oils is you can... Get a hot shower, um, or you can take like a salt bath. Those are really good things to do, especially with respiratory uh, issues or concerns. So doing a salt bath or doing uh, oils in the shower because you have the steam coming up in the shower and you can put those same oils on the floor of the shower and they will steam up into the nasal passages and help with uh, healing and moistening the, uh, the cavity and the wall of the lungs. And the nasal passages. So, what? Um, Getting sick is so miserable. Yeah, I it's hate not to use fun. those words because I feel like there's good in everything, and sometimes it's a good opportunity to 
When I think your body's run down. Yeah. It's kind of like saying, Hey, we, we need a minute and we need you to slow down for a minute too. And we need to start recovering. We need some R and R. Right. And that's really what it's telling us oftentimes is just take, take a step back. Helps you recalibrate what really matters. You ever have that feeling on the first day after you've been sick for a while and you just feel so good to just be back to baseline. Yes. And you're like, this was already available to me. Yes. What I feel today with this just natural energy of being able to like exist without being sick again is what I had a week ago. It was always there. Mm-hmm. And I had this sense of gratitude of like, I don't know why I feel so good today, except for it's like, oh, I'm just, you know, if you're sick, all you want to do is be healthy, right? And then when you're healthy, you have all these dreams, but a sick person just wants to feel well. So if you, if you're having a tough time with life and you don't have the flu or COVID, just remember it could always be worse. It could be worse. It could be worse. And remember that your body has all of the tools built into it to make you feel like you need to rest. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All of the tools, which is why you feel crummy when you start to feel sick, right? So Mm. you get invaded by a pathogen, your body maybe has a fever, starts to get a runny nose, maybe a little cough, maybe some congestion, a productive cough, or maybe blood tinge sputum type cough. Maybe your stomach feels a little upset. All of those things are are, um, immune system regulated. It's the immune system attempting to curtail and eliminate the pathogen. And we're seeing the result of that. And we're feeling the result of our immune system working. So what we want to do is to rev up our immune response and support our body as much as possible using a variety of different um, tips and techniques that we share with you here. And then also using some herbals, some specific herbals. When I get sick, I love to uh, get ozone treatment at Dr. Dumar's office here in Heber City, Utah. If you don't know, link to community health and wellness and Heber is in the description. So get yourself some ozone, get yourself some acupuncture. That stuff's amazing. But if you're not local or if you don't have time to do that, sir, the floor is yours. There's a great podcast on ozone. Yeah. We did one before where we, we actually did a breathing treatment, didn't we? On, on felt so good podcast. after it was great. Yeah. Felt so good after. Yeah. So, and we can, we can do that for all the lung surfaces for, um, uh, endonasal upper respiratory, Uh, We do that a lot. So breathing treatments we perform here in the office. But also at home, there are home kit nebulizers that you can purchase. And especially if you have children, if you're working with children, or if you have children that you're um, a caretaker for or a provider for, I think a nebulizer is an important thing to have on hand. Uh, And you can uh, nebulize essential oils. You can nebulize uh, colloidal silver or... We should do a podcast about how to use a nebulizer at home. Let's let's do it. Next. Yeah. Next episode. Next podcast. You're telling me... I I interrupted you. That's all right. But you can can, uh, turn around significant uh, ailments and lung disorders and issues using a nebulizer. Uh, And I've had a number of patients and athletes present to me with history of... um, of pneumonia and bronchitis, and now they've developed asthma because they've had maybe even some little scarring or scar tissue to the bronchioles. Uh, so now they have asthma, and now they're using an inhaler. And then they got to a point where the inhaler wasn't as successful even. They're using the inhaler repeatedly, uh, and they needed more help. And so with those patients, we used a variety of herbals And we also used a nebulizer, had them use a nebulizer uh, frequently at home. Uh, And then we did some acupuncture. So with that patient in particular, the one that's in my mind right now, um, uh, he was a a big time wrestler and was getting to the point where he couldn't even finish a two and a half minute bout because his lungs were preventing him from getting enough air. So he felt like it was just getting way too overwhelming to wrestle because of his lungs, not because of his strength or his capacity physically. So we were able to turn that around for him in a matter of weeks, honestly, uh, in a significant way. Uh, and we treated him for probably about two to three months after that as well throughout his, um, his uh, season. And uh, he did really, really well and has done since. So there are definitely... 
uh, strategies that can be implemented at home and strategies that can be impl- implemented before we have to start utilizing medications or uh, pharmacopoeia or... Uh, what did you put in the nebulizer? The nebulizer? Mm-hmm. We used uh, peppermint. Wow. How do I know if I'm doing the right thing with that, though? How do you know if you're doing the right I'm thing? You have to I mean, check my... with your doctor. Okay. I would check with a local doctor. I wouldn't just go out and say, I'm going to nebulize whatever I want. Uh, I think it's really wise to have a care provider, a natural health physician, somebody who understands functional and integrative medicine uh, in your pocket, somewhere yeah. in your community. Make sure that you have that or you have access to it. If you don't, uh, reach out to us and, and we can uh, set up a, a way for you to be at least be able to communicate with us or a member of my staff so that you can get the answers that you need. If nothing else, it's nice to know that there are other options out there Mm -hmm. because certain times you go and get one opinion from one person and you don't realize that, well, there was a way to possibly supplement this option or obviate it, make it unnecessary, try something. Anyway, options are good. Health is complicated and uh, herbs are important. So shall we? Let's do it. You want to talk about herbs? Let's talk about herbs. I'm I'm trying not to get too relaxed here in the uh, Be Well Now podcast. He's so uh, relaxed. Studio B. He had some herbs before he came. No big deal. No big no, deal. No, those days are long gone, sir. <laughs> no herbs. No herbs for Nick. Huh? Nope. Nope. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right, Just fine. Just drinking my Lionade here, li- okay, which is a... Good. Uh, uh, Earth Medicine Cabinet product. With yeah, some so here he is. Here he is taking an uh, an energy and focus drink, mm-hmm. and he's feeling relaxed. That's what I'm talking about right there. That is that is prime energy. That is prime energy. And you can have That's, energy and relax. The problem here is that uh, all my vices are gone except for a serious caffeine addiction because I had a lot of coffee earlier. T- I was thinking about that too. Is like, I've I've gotten rid of the caffeine before. Sure. It happens. You just, wanted it. you just wanted it back. I did want it back. I think. Yeah. It is one of those things where it gives me. I mean, it sure as heck beats like a dopamine cycle around like smoking a cigarette, right? Like if I get sure. this task done, I can like. It's like if I get up and meditate for an hour, I can't wait to make that cup of coffee. If I hit two hours of being awake without caffeine, right? Like then that's the way I think about it. I'm like, I can't wait to have that coffee with my breakfast and. <sighs> I ritual. earned it, but, but it's a ritual. I do want it in my life. Yeah. And then after that, I want another coffee and then I want some lionate. So it's, it's another, uh, it's another challenge along the road. It's mine to work it's with. It's a ritual we're working through. Yeah. It, and the it, question is whether or not it needs to be, um, minimized. You know, and I don't, I don't know that I can say that it does in, right. every, in every case. So it, it may or may not like I know we're working through that. Is it serving me is a real question. And it's like, right. I don't think it's, or are you me. depending on it? Oh, I'm depending. That's the on other it. question. I, I'm depending on it. Mm-hmm. Absolute dependence, migraines, if I don't get it. So is it serving me? Like the answer is probably not, but in some ways it's the, it's the dance of my life. So here, here you are, you know, caffeine addiction. Welcome to the club, Nick. Well, for those who are looking for other options as well, like herbal options mm. for their lung health, uh, and <laughs> are we um, trying to get minim- back on track minimal here? caffeine, minimal caffeine uh, options for their energy. Yeah, you know, Lionade is what you brought up. That's that was. Oh, our, I love Lionade. That was one of our uh, options to help you get off of of ca- coffee as well. So, which I did like a year and a half ago. Yes, and it's a long story as to like why I'm back on the caffeine. You know, yeah, folks, I mean, I like, I went off my antidepressants. That was rough. So like through it all, I voluntarily said, I'm like, I want something to anchor myself in that gives me sure. a dopamine. Like, and I chose caffeine to be the drug and yes. I'm, I'm still with it after everything else I've successfully moved past, but like the caffeine's still there. But and yes. you've been off of your, you've been off of your antidepressants for how long? I remember April was a really tough month. Yeah. That's when I was really going through it and I was fully off, I think by May. Like so eight it's, months. Yeah. Five, six, seven. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Probably eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Good for you, man. That's going good. Yeah. You're doing great. And I feel very good about being autonomous from the drugs. Mm-hmm. Right. I think we all want that sense of autonomy. So that's a great thing. Like I love feeling like I don't need it. And if I forgot to take that pill by 1 PM, like the world would start to get really weird. And like, I'm so grateful for that. I can't even tell a difference now 
Except for that emotions are very raw sometimes. Yeah. Well, sometimes you, I just like you're really into that cry. Mm -hmm. But then I think back and I'm like, was that memory of my kids being like kissed by the October sunlight at the pumpkin patch playing in like a barrel of, you know, like corn, wasn't that beautiful enough to cry out of joy about it? I'm like, yeah, that was beautiful. Like, I don't feel that weird about crying about that. That is amazing. They're these humans that were created and I get to love them. And like, if I cry about that, I'm like, I think that's okay. So well, I just feel a little bit more. There's something greater in this world than uh, all of us that touches us from time to time or that we have moments to share uh, in. And I think that those moments are certainly worth a significant amount of appreciation. Mm. And if crying is a, a way of, of the body showing appreciation for a moment of uh, bliss or a moment of uh, godliness or heaven, heavenliness, then 100%, I'd say. Take that all day long, buddy. Sometimes. Crying is, an, is, a, is a great trade-off for being free from medications. Oh, yeah, and sometimes it's crying because things are hard. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think that's probably, that is a better, I, I don't mind that. It's just I feel a lot of things. Yeah. But I always have. Anyway. Well, and, and yeah. That's how that's how a number of people are. We're all uh, a little different as far as how we we respond to our environment. And today, we're all a little bit individual and biologically diverse and unique, which mm. means not all of us are going to respond the exactly same way to a, a pathogen or exposure to our lungs. Right. So, COVID nineteen doesn't affect everybody the same way. It didn't affect the elderly or the young or the middle-aged, there were different subsets and groups that, if you remember, were targeted differently. Uh, and and because of that, it may means that we should maybe address those groups a little uniquely as well. And so we do that uh, in our practice as well. Hmm. When we uh, are working with a toddler, or if we're working with a pediatric a patient, we're going to address that patient and obviously dose them and prescribe certain things for that patient that might be unique or different than, say, a um, geriatric patient or an older patient that we would be working with. So it's, it's different. We're biologically diverse. We're not all the same. It's not a McDonald's approach where it's one size fits all. It's not a necessary, or I guess you could say it might be more like Burger King. Have it your way. <laughs> I'm just saying it's like people get flu shots. Yes. Here's one shot. Yes, it's the same. And it's the same strain, uh, you know, and they change it each year. They, they do their best to, to, uh, and hope that it's as similar to the flu strain that's going to be uh, in nature that year. They're, they're hoping it is, but they don't. They don't know. They don't know until it actually happens. And so, how so, successful so is the flu shot? Well, we don't know. We don't know until after the fact. Really? Yeah. I mean, do I get one then? Should I get one? What would you say if you were my doctor? Oh, if I were your doctor, if I were your doctor, Nick, you're in a good place. You're in a good place right now. And I would say there isn't a need for you to get a flu shot, but I think that there are several other things that we can do to um, support your lungs and support your body and your immune system, which would be far better than getting a flu shot. Um, also, it's I think it's interesting just to note because uh, the statistics just came out on the number of people, this is from the, uh, the FDA, the number of people... Uh, who actually uh, have taken the flu shot this year compared to 2022 and 2021. And it was uh, during COVID. And so it was like 2021. I actually, I think it's when the, um, the last survey was sent out and it was 57% actually got the flu shot. So in the middle of, in the midst of COVID, 57% of people felt like, okay, it's important for me to also get the flu shot. Well, now it's 2023. There's no COVID per se. There's COVID still, still happening, but it's not as for, in the forefront as it was then. 
but the numbers have dropped to about 45% of people feeling like it's necessary a lot for of them people. to get the flu shot. It's a 45%, 45% of the of adults. adults population adults. is getting the flu shot. Yes. That's a lot of people. That's what they're saying. It's a lot. That's the survey. A lot of shots. So that's what they're determining. But what the concern was is they're wondering why it went down. Their concern is that it went down. So um, I don't think that that's necessarily because people think that it's less of a problem or less of an issue. I think it might be more because people are starting to take more of their own health in their own hands. And they're recognizing that there are many other things that they can do for their own health, such as herbals, to help support their lungs and prevent the flu. In our office, we use for a lot of our patients cold and flu formula. We have a cold and flu formula that if they take, especially from the months of, of August to November, it's going to help prevent their body from developing the flu. Is that gone viral? Uh, gone viral is a different one, but that okay. will also be beneficial for patients. So your, your cold and flu viral, uh, your cold and flu supplement, yeah. you just put it's in? An herb, it's an herbal. Yeah, okay. so it's powder form. Yeah. And you just put it in, a, in water and, you, and stir it up because it'll have little granules. It's a, um, it's a granulated powder. So it's created from the plants itself that are that make up that formula. And then, yeah, you just stir it into water. And once it dissolves, you drink it and you're good. Something so... Cold and flu. Yeah, if you're interested, you can uh, visit the website. Yes, and we have a listing. We do have a tab on the website, COVID-19, which has specific strategies for preventing uh, flu and viruses, um, for, for, you know, those areas and those seasons when the viruses and the flu are more problematic or more severe. Well, I'm going to link that in the description. Sounds like a, a jolly good time. It's a good thing to do. So, yeah, well, um, we're 27 minutes of into things, this podcast. Are we going to talk about the herbs? I think we should. I don't care we? if we do. You can mention them. Okay. Maybe just a little mention. We'll Maybe just, mention and we can even, I mean, who just, even cares? Just touch on it. All right. Well, name it. Here's one thing that uh, might if be beneficial for people. And it, <laughs> if you have fever, if you have some lung issue, or upper respiratory issue, and you also have a fever, okay. this herb could be very, very beneficial. Okay. Right. Now I'm going to say it because you, you said it's important to make sure people have this ready at their hands. And I think that's right. We've discussed these things and, and I'm like, well, no, we need to just get as deep into the weeds as possible. And Nick's like, no, just pull it pull it forward. Like, let's just distill this down so we can have people get a grasp of it. Well, so the weed needs to be pulled out of the ground. Oh, there we go. So we that's what we're doing. We need to reveal it. We're revealing it. We're revealing it. It is what it is and it's deep, but we're also bringing it to the people. Yes. That's what this is about. So here's an herb that will help reduce a fever, relieve the toxic burden that is placed on the body by an invading pathogen and help it with an anti-inflammatory effect as well. And that herb is called Jin Yin Hua. See, there you go. Now, did I pronounce it correctly? Well, to you, most of you, I probably did pronounce it correctly. To my Asian professors, I did not. I absolutely did not. So I have to apologize to them. But what is this herb, really? It's honeysuckle flower. I've heard of that. See, that makes more sense, doesn't it now? So honeysuckle flower is a fever reducer. It's anti-toxic or uh, anti-inflammatory, and it can help relieve the body of the burden from a toxic invasion. Boom. Honeysuckle. So there you go. Find some honeysuckle flower. And we do have herbals, a number of my herbals that... um, treat flu or treat bronchitis, treat pneumonia, have honeysuckle flower in it. What's tough about your herbals is like, it's not just like take one dose and you feel better. Right. I don't think the body works that way, does it? No. Because we're used to pills well, in a pharmacy. I don't know that, that a pharmacy pill works that way either, but go no, ahead. But, you, yes. but, like, but it like relieves symptoms, right? Like yeah. ibuprofen can make my headache kind of go away. Yes. Like... Dayquil might do something, although you don't really feel like you're not sick when you take Dayquil. You definitely feel, whatever, you've probably never taken it. The body takes its time sometimes, but your stuff works. It's just, it doesn't, it's not like one dose and all of a sudden you're... 
It's an investment for health. No, it, it yeah. works. And I you're going to have to do it. A, yeah. It, you're going to have to do it multiple doses a day, probably. And, and likely you'll have to do it for a few days. Now, if you feel something just coming on, like you feel, oh, a sore throat. Mm. Uh, Lian Chow is uh, one of our next herbs. Okay. I and have a whole cabinet of your herbs. I believe in it. Okay. I wasn't denigrating what you do. It we, was we like, no, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So Lian Chow, works. but He's this, gonna, this could be, if you feel like a, a sore throat or something in the back of your throat and you're not sure exactly whether that's going to progress. If you take Lian Chow for Scythia, for Scythia, for Scythia. Yeah. Okay. If you take this, that will completely ameliorate that sore throat. And it will help reduce the pathogenic burden that is presenting an inflammatory response in your throat. Is that the cool coat throat? The cool coat throat has forsythia in it. Yes. It's a, it's a great good. little formula. Very good. Yeah, yeah it I is. Like it. And it works, it works very well. I mean, mm-hmm. literally um, a sore throat. I think of the times that I've had a sore throat since I started using my herbal formulas. It's probably been almost 20 years. Certainly since I've had a sore throat that's like really impacted or been a problem for me, you know, when you get that sore throat and you're like, oh, I can't swallow or I can't eat something or that hurts. I haven't had that for 20 years. Uh, and, and my kids, if they start to get a sore throat, the moment they start to notice it, boom, I'm right on that for Scythia. I'm right on the cool coat throat, which has some other herbs and stuff in it. Um, that helps support that area and the, and the back of the throat and the lungs. But uh, that's one that could be really beneficial for you as well. How do you feel about Mary Poppins? I think a spoonful of sugar is uh, sometimes a good thing, but you have to look at the quality of the sugar and the source. I was going to say, did she help or hurt medicine with that line? Uh, because some of your herbals are not all that tasty. No, no. But yeah. they're real medicine. Well, which I know is why they she work. wanted to do a spoonful of sugar. And right? I think about trying to feed my kids some of these herbals. And it's at a, at a young age, your kids take them because they've known only this. My kids are with their mom sometimes. And, you know, the, the food over there may not be the same that I've. So I, I don't control the sugar and the junk food. So their, their palate is used to like certain yeah. sugar levels, right? And the medicine they take may have sugar, or whatever, yeah, Tylenol they chew or whatever bubble gum flavor. So if I try to give them some cool coat throat in some hot water, which is taste, actually a good tasting herbal, that's a good one. I think I've tried maybe gone viral. I, some, but other, they have a hard time with it. They have a hard time with and it. One of the yeah. reasons they have a hard time with it is because the herbals actually coat the throat. Like mm-hmm. you'll feel tingling, you'll feel a little tingling, and maybe even a little bitterness over your, your oral cavity and the back of your throat. And that's one of the reasons kids can have a harder time with it. They're not used to that sensation. They're not used to something doing that. I mean, part like milk, I guess. If they drink milk, it coats, but it, it's like a, a sticky film coating. This is a, it's actually penetrating into your cells feeling, right? Uh, almost if you've, if you've got raw tissue or inflamed tissue, you'll almost feel a little bit of a burn or a sting in there too with the cool coat throat. So it, it is possible that kids are going to be like, what is that? It's just different maybe. Like you said, it's just different than what they're used to. Yeah. Anyway. Well, what, what we're used to, honestly, is this is this uh, big food, corporate incorporated food machine that wants us to eat things out of a bag Mm. and processed in a chemical factory, right? Delivered to us just the way food should be, but resembling nothing of food at all. Right. When, when that's what we're used to, of course, eating, uh, eating real food is going to be a problem. So maybe some raw local unfiltered honey would be better to sweeten the tea. There's the sugar that goes down. Love That's some honey. the source. Love some honey. Yep. Uh, we've talked about a few herbs. Where are we at? Did you want to talk about some more? Could we? Okay, so let's talk about another one then. Uh, this one will actually help stop your cough and reduce wheezing. This is a really critical, very important and commonly used herb. It's also one that's been a lot. It's been out in uh, uh, journals and uh, medical journals and in the uh, in news as being advertised for um, for anti-cancerous effects and anti-COVID effects and strong anti-inflammatory effects. And the, the source of 
of uh, B17 uh, vitamin. You've probably never heard of that, right? I don't know, but so I'm very intrigued. This is Shingren Ooh. or apricot kernel. Apricot kernel. Yeah, so consuming apricot kernels can actually benefit the lungs, arrest wheezing, meaning stop the wheezing, and stop the cough. So it can help support the lungs uh, so that it's not um, feeling that kind of wheezing, constricted nature. You get that constriction in the, the, um, the, of the bronchioles and then the inflammation that takes place and occurs in there, and the Shingren helps to reduce that sensation. So yeah, apricot kernel. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> Who would have thought? So this is, I've talked about this one. Uh, should we talk about another one? I've, I've mentioned this yes. one before. It's called Bansha. And it's like a, it's like a, uh, ooh, what's a good way of describing this one? Um, like a mucus dissolver, right? So if you have mucus that's getting really cloying, you want your, you want your um, fluid in the body to really be moving closer to like water rather than moving like a sludge. Right. So um, this herbal is called bansha. Remember us bancha. talking about this? Bansha. I do. I, yeah. 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 So you bancha, went into the, uh, there's a story about this. A story. Yeah. You went into the front desk and the guy didn't know what you were oh, talking bancha, about. Bansha. Bansha. Yeah. 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 So bansha, I like to use bansha. Where are my, where are my Be Well Now listeners at? Yeah. Who remembers the exact episode and where they were when oh, they Oh, there you go. Do we have story? like a, we should give something away for that? It sounds like. That sounds like a contest of some sort. So, um, bansha. Bansha will help resolve dampness that resolve that cloying nature and you can imagine if that's in your lungs if it's in your throat it's very likely it's in your lungs okay so if you're like oh you know people feel that phlegm that builds up in their throat if that's in your throat it's in your respiratory system it's very likely forming in your lungs so bansha is an herb that will help resolve that so the fluids are moving more um, viscously they're moving in, in uh, they're moving in a lot smoother way than clumped up and cloying wood. Okay. And that's what we want. So bansha is actually panela, panela root. That's a fairly commonly used uh, herb and actually uh, homeopathy too okay. for, for flu and for uh, um, lung related disorders. One more. All right. One more. Okay. Last one. Keep this one is also a, a relief, it relieves cough. It helps dissolve phlegm, uh, and it will help with uh, the the throat as well. And this one is called jay gung, jay gung. Okay. Okay. Platycodon probably doesn't mean anything to anybody, but I thought it was an important one because I use it a lot in my herbal formulas. Yeah, yeah. So I have we have cool coat throat, we have cold and flu that we use, we have immune boost. Ooh, these Remember are the these are immune boost. We have gone viral. Okay. Like these are, this is your, this, this is your hits. set. Yeah. This is your set hits, folks. Oh. of viral pathogenic factor, upper respiratory and lung uh, infection killers, right? These will, these herbals will absolutely clear all of those pathogenic factors. And, and why, are keep they you better, well. why are they better than a antibiotic that I get at the pharmacy? Oh my goodness. Oh, here it is. Why are they better than Did I antibiotic? open up a can of worms? Are, so antibiotic, whether you use an antibiotic from the pharmacy or you're using an herbal, should really be more of a timing and a, and a state. Like what is your current state of health, right? And if you're in a state of sickness that is so progressed and so severe that you have to absolutely take like a massive hold on it, and kind of nuclear bomb everything inside, that's when it's time to get the antibiotic at the pharmacy. Okay. But even in those times, I contest that I've still taken patients who are there in those moments, and we've utilized formulas with higher doses, right, in more significant repetition and, um, and more frequency throughout the day, and we've completely ameliorated their symptoms, reduced and eliminated infections as well. So people might in their minds think, oh yeah, herbals, that's for like common, just 
you know, trying to stay healthy and prophylactic, preventative type stuff. But the reality is, as a physician and as a doctor, I'm, I'm treating infections a lot. I'm reversing and ameliorating uh, bronchitis, pneumonia. We're, we're dealing with severe and significant, even COPD we're benefiting, okay? Congestive obstructive pulmonary disorder, right? So um, patients, some of the things that you can do, again, let's do this right at the end here. Some of the things that you can do at home. One of the things I would say is if you're smoking or vaping, stop. That's one thing that you can do at home. That's one thing you can do it on your own to help benefit your lung health. Okay. It ain't easy stopping, but it's worth it. No, but it, yeah, it, it'll pay dividends in the long run for your cholesterol, for your cardiovascular health, for, for your metabolic health in so many ways. So I think we gave some great suggestions for things that they can do on their own at home. Mm-hmm. And I think we gave some herbals as well here. So what are we doing next week? Did you say? First of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of our fans out there, our loyal listeners. Hey, what should we do next week? We could do a nebulizer podcast. Yeah, we, we could just nebulize. kick it with uh, just go for it with the squad. You know, yeah, lounging in Studio B. You, you want to grab these chairs and not the other chairs that we I, have. I think Studio B has become a favorite. Oh, you like it here? If okay. folks, if if folks, you picked up a vibe that you like. Okay, listening. I'm not sure how it looks visually, but it feels good. To just relax. Yeah, it feels good to be relaxed. I, I prefer it. Okay. Studio B it is. <laughs> Until we get told otherwise. So like and subscribe, comment, let us know what you want us doing. And Studio B or Studio A, that's what, you know, t- tell us. You got to tell us in the comments. You know what time it is. It's time mm. for the magic word. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Namaste.